We're going to talk about five must-haves for RVing Baja. And um, I want to um, have a couple of honorable mentions before we start that didn't make the list. One is this camping book, this Mexican camping book by Mike and Terry Church. It's awesome. Trust me. Thank you, Aunt Elaine and Uncle Don, for loaning that to Indeed. us. Indeed. And another thing that I've not been able to really live without because yeah, just because it's really hot and deserty down here is my frog tog um, cooling cloth. It um, it's evaporative, so it it's like a it's like a miniature air conditioner around your neck. Uh. This was another brand, Mueller, that uh, I found at a different store. These these are found at Walmart, and this was found at um, Freddy's, I yeah, think. I think so. And it's it's like small, and this is way bigger. But these are just awesome. This and both of us have used them, and they're just sure. You know, yeah. If you're overheating, that's gonna cool you down. Yep. The first thing nice. that you're going to need, absolutely positively, because the roads are so bad, you're going to need an air compressor or a tire inflator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, something that'll do, you know, 110 pounds. Um, if it's a compressor, then you're going to want, like, at least a two-gallon tank. You know, otherwise you're going to be sitting there for an hour trying to pump up a tire. You're going to want to be able to uh, air down your tires for really bumpy roads. You're gonna to want to be able. You're gonna to want to know your weights, so you can know how far down you can take them and still be all right. You know, because you you know you run too low of a tire down a road, it's gonna overheat and it's gonna fly apart. So that's no good. So know your weights on each one of your wheels if possible. Know you know get a tire chart from your particular vendor. You know for your particular tires. You can get them all day long on the internet. It's definitely something you need before you come down here and because uh, uh, there's a lot of dirt roads a lot of dirt roads and some of the paved roads are like they've been bombed out or something there's so many potholes it's just bam 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 and if your tires are up too high it's just going to beat the heck out of you and your coach so there are a lot of tire important. shops oh lots of and tire you'll be shops. able to get your tire fixed oh but they God. are everywhere they're cheap too but you're going to want to inflate your tire if you've got a leak you're going to want to inflated enough where you can safely get yep. there and you need it to be powerful enough for an RV. Yep. If you're in your RV, coach. These are usually running, you know, 80, 90 pounds of air and your little your little one for your car is not going to be able to do that. It's not going to be able to push that. So. so check out our video on what to do if you get a flat tire in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that you're going to need is water containers. Mm. You'll need drinking water. Yep. We have the five gallon jugs there, but really what we should have gotten now, you know, looking back, hindsight's great, isn't it? Um, is the, the collapsible cube type. Because the five gallon jugs, the hard plastic jugs, if that falls over, it very likely will crack, you know? I didn't think that would happen, but yeah, it I didn't did. One, one of them went bye-bye, yeah. bye. but we crack. were able to replace it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of five gallon jugs here. Almost every store you go to has a drinking water machine and or um, delivered five gallon bottles. Right, and the cubes uh -huh. are almost indestructible. I mean, you know, far more flexible. And if you're not using it, you can collapse it and stow it in a much smaller space than a big old five gallon jug. So definitely get the, the water cubes. I right. think Coleman makes a good, good brand, a couple others, you know. And Look if you that. have a small um, water tank like our RV does, it, it's kind of an older one. Um, yeah, it was not made want, to live in. You might want to get one of those um, humongous water bladders like our friends um, Val and Glenn with RVing Basset Hounds, Abby Bella has. They've got it in the back of their Jeep and yeah. uh, it extends their boondock ability a long time. Yeah, in fact, uh, you could fit it right in a pass-through. I was get measuring that out. It's 40, that'd be 45 extra gallons 
plus well it'd be almost 400 pounds if it's full but if i put it through the front pass through and and get it all secured in there that would bring a lot of the weight onto the front wheels and balance out the coach more coaches tend to be real real back end heavy and especially if you're towing a toad and all that it tends to make you want to dance like this at least it does not a workhorse chassis so keep that in mind another thing you're um you must have is good gps and maps while you're here um, absolutely our gps we we did the 50 dollars extra thing here recently because it wasn't showing us very much stuff for mexico yeah. and it turned out to be an absolute waste of time yeah. but between this book and the gps coordinates it has in here and our gps it gets us to where we're going yep um, and it's also just nice to have a paper map so you can see the whole thing like the couple of apps i have on my phone they work offline and they're fantastic but you yeah. can't you can't really see the whole thing. I mean, it's a phone, so you can't see the whole of Baja. It's, it's nice to know where you're in, where you're at in relation to other things. But Virtual Maze has been a good offline app. And uh -huh. the other one that we use all the time is just called Map of Mexico offline. Yep. Yep. And, um, and both of them just work really well for being able to tell you how far it is to the destination town that you're going and, and it, Sure. uses your phone basically as a as a gps so make sure you get some some offline ability yeah on the, your map the more ways you can the better multiple redundancy that's the that's the whole thing with rving multiple redundancy many ways to get something done because if something fails well here you are you know <laughs> now yeah. what it's pretty rugged here pretty primitive here so you're going to want to be prepared with stuff um, absolutely one of the things that you're going to need because there are a lot of insects here there are a lot of mosquitoes a lot of ants a lot of flying bugs a lot of creatures that yeah. want to get into your rv yes, they and do. make their home there so you're going to want um, to have some um what is it not borax but um Boric um, acid. Boric acid. Um, You're going to want to make a line around your RV so the ants don't get in. You're going to want huh. mosquito repellent. We have the yep. RAID plug-in kind. Yep. Uh, because there are places you will not be able to get any sleep at night. They will find it. They're so hungry. They'll find the way into your RV yes, because they will. RVs are not sealed units. They'll find a way in there. And in Guero Negro, Indoors, we got eaten alive every night. Oh, it yeah. Was absolutely horrible. They'd just come. And so... About um, 2 o'clock in the morning, it'd just come in a wave. So we tried the plug-in, and it completely worked. We had no problems with mosquitoes indoors nope. then. Oh, nope. gone. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> um, you might want to bring a mosquito repellent that you put on your skin with you. Um, we bought some off down here, and it just doesn't work at all. No. Um, it's not deep woods off. And yeah, it's, um, it's like for kids and stuff. It's and you just, may want yeah. something natural too. It isn't poisoning you. So bring a bunch of it from the states. Um, Once again, multiple redundancy, right? Mosquito netting wouldn't be a bad idea either for like over your bed. Yeah, and there are some bugs that just make their way in for no good reason. They're just in there. Um, yeah. In Guero Negro, we had these icky brown bugs coming in and apparently for no reason and down here in Baja Sur we have a similar bug a lighter color coming in for yeah. no good reason and it's just grossing me out I mean just I wants don't to like it hang out on the ceiling it just it's easily killed and no matter what we do we can't seem to get rid of them you know I don't know uh, yeah they're not they don't care about mosquito repellent things or any of that so whatever yeah so we're not really sure what to do about those, but um, but we do have a fly swatter, and that works pretty good for those things. Or just, you know, uh, tissueing them off just the... Just grab a piece of tissue and just crunch into the garbage it goes. And... Yeah. Um, but we have discovered that um, we, we had been turning on the outside light for security because we're alone on a free beach. Yeah. And uh, we do have things outside that we don't want taken. Um, we find if we turn that off at you know don't have that on at night until we go to bed um i don't even think we had it on last night no at all. we didn't yeah um that really helps a lot 
Yeah. Uh, because those things are terribly attracted to the light. <laughs> light. Yeah. And there's no light along this beach. There's no electricity with the houses nope. that are down here at the other end of the it, beach. It's dark. <laughs> it's dark as a tomb out here if there's no moon, you know. So, yeah. The final thing that you must have down here is a good first aid kit. Uh, yes. You don't want to go to a hospital. Don't no. go to a hospital, don't go to a hospital, and don't go to a hospital because they can charge you anything they want and they will hold you hostage. And I'm not kidding, the police will hold you hostage until you pay it. Yep. And there's a, a lady from Idaho we read about who's in Mazatlan right now who can't escape because they're holding her until her family pays the $33,000 bill that she accrued yeah. at the hospital. It's not, it's not like the U.S. where you can be billed. Or They're not going to bill you. They're just going to keep you until you pay. And she apparently did not have Mexican health insurance. And we don't either. We don't go to doctors or anything like yeah. that. But if one of us got hurt, we would need um, uh, some sort of first aid training, which we both have, yeah. and a good first aid kit, which we have. Yep. So don't, don't go to the hospital. Make sure that you can take care of a cut or something like that, or a sprain, or whatever. Yeah, have some sutures, something like that, you know. No way we'll get okay, that. and cut. And cut.